Hello, amigos. It's been a while, and this is a video I've been trying to make for quite some time. But I'm home, and at home I'm lazy, and I keep postponing things. And this is boring. But uh, here we are again, and today I am determined to finish this. Okay, so high speed flight it is. So the first thing that comes to my mind when we hear the term high speed flight is Mac number. What is Mac number? Mac number is basically a measure of the compressibility of air. Because air is a fluid and it is compressible. Right? And if you put, put it down mathematically, you, the formula would be Mach number is equal to true air speed divided by local speed of sound. True air speed of the aircraft and local speed of sound is the speed with which pressure waves travel through air. And local speed of sound, again the formula for that is a constant K into the root of absolute temperature or the temperature in Kelvin. And the constant K is approximately equal to 38 point something. And for calculations, you can take it as 39. So, if you examine the formula further, you can see that as long as the true air speed of the aircraft is equal to the local speed of sound, the Mach number is 1. So, let's have a look into this deeply. What does this exactly mean? You see, uh, let's go back firstly to our basic school science. Uh, you've all learned what is a disturbance or what is a wave. A wave is a disturbance, right? So, when the aircraft passes through air, it causes a disturbance, right? So, that disturbance is propagated as a pressure wave. Okay, are you getting my point? I hope so. So these pressure waves travel as in there is a vibration that is basically induced into air molecules and air molecules they transfer this uh, vibration to adjacent air molecules and obviously in this process some energy is lost. So uh, this wave or this pressure wave that is formed keeps on moving forward till the full or till the whole of that energy is dissipated. Okay, so uh, at what speed do these pressure waves travel? So that speed is the same as local speed of sound, and that depends only on the absolute temperature of the air. Okay, so from that you can understand that. If the speed of the pressure waves is the same as that of the aircraft, basically what happens is there is no advance warning for the air molecules that an aircraft is approaching. So uh, normally on all the aerodynamics you have learned when you are drawing an aerofoil and then you draw the streamlines around it, you can see the air bifurcates into two somewhat ahead of it. But in this case, when the Mach number is equal to 1, that angle at which it would be uh, almost at 90 degrees or something. Okay, that's just a rough number. But basically what I'm trying to tell here is that there will be no advance warning. And basically in supersonic flight, there is no upwash and downwash. That's what I'm saying. It's not going to go over the aerofoil. It's just going to be no upwash and downwash, just splits up. And that's the scenario when a shockwave is formed. We'll get to shock waves later. So, uh, at Mach 1, air molecules pile up in front of the aircraft. Now, also, I would like to introduce you guys to a uh, few more terms. First one is M crit or the critical Mach number. So, over the aircraft in a subsonic flight, okay? Or, or take, a, just, take just an aerofoil. And uh, so, in the normal cases, you all know that over the aerofoil, the air is accelerated, right? So at a certain point, this uh, airflow can become 
uh, equal to 1 or yeah it, it becomes equal to 1 or it becomes supersonic basically so at that point what is the speed of the aircraft that is called the critical Mach number or critical Mach number is the speed of the aircraft at which the Mach number over some part of it becomes equal to 1. Then the next term is the free stream Mach number. Free stream Mach number is actually the speed of the air which is sufficiently removed from the aircraft so that it is not disturbed by the aircraft at all. Or we can also say that it is basically the speed of the aircraft through air. And this is the Mach number which you see on your Mach meter. And the third term here is the local Mach number. That, as I said initially when I was explaining M crit, I mentioned that the Mach number accelerates over some parts of the aerofoil and decelerates over some other parts, right? So, at any specific point of the aircraft, if you check the Mach number, that is the local Mach number. Okay. So, next is how is a shockwave produced i just told you that but let's have a look into it deeply i am not a great artist but still i have drawn a few pictures here i hope it is clear enough it's a slightly smaller picture i actually drew and had to stretch to fit it to the screen so let's have a look at the first picture over here okay so this is subsonic flight flight sorry Mach number less than 1 and I have taken an approximate value of 0.82 Mach. So here is the air bifurcating. Okay. And here the air is accelerating. And this is where the Mach number reaches 1. And here the normal shock wave is produced. Okay. And so here normally behind the Mach or oh, sorry behind the shock wave the airflow starts to get separated and the airflow is subsonic always behind the normal shock wave this shock wave you can see is perpendicular to the streamline so it's called a normal shock wave and always behind a normal shock wave the airflow will be subsonic and this value is roughly the subsonic value would be roughly equal to the inverse um, of the uh, Mach number ahead of it that would be here okay and uh, the picture here shows it as streamlines but uh, normally the as i said the streamlines will start getting detached uh, the boundary layer basically separates behind the shock wave now the second picture here again the same thing just a little faster still the mac number is less than one yet it's very close to one it's a 0.95 the value i've taken here you can see that here this is the red part where the aircraft accelerates this is the supersonic region and this is the normal shock wave or basically what uh, we notice over here is that the shock wave has moved and uh, moved aft and it's almost at the trailing edge okay next but so uh, it is uh, understood that like okay uh, about the shock stall is the next term that we're going to encounter but i'll come to that later so here is the third picture i have here this is the supersonic range mach number greater than one i've taken 1.05 as the value so in this case here is the normal shock wave okay this part is the normal shock wave uh, the figure is not accurate enough but this part would be perpendicular as in the shock wave would be perpendicular to these streamlines okay and since this shock wave is in the form of a bow it's called a bow wave and this part of it above and below the normal shock wave is the oblique shock wave okay now the red shaded part here as i said behind the normal shock wave the speed is always subsonic so this red red shaded part will be subsonic again here you can see at the trailing edge is another shock wave form. See here I have just redrawn this figure for you just to get some clarity. Okay, so here this is the free stream Mach number. Air is undisturbed over here. And here's the shock wave behind the normal 
supposed to be normal to the streamlines okay here so behind that we have subsonic flow which is almost equal to the reciprocal of the free stream Mach number right uh, one thing particular i would like to uh, mention over here is that see uh, as i said uh, at Mach 1 the airflow starts to separate now if you uh, if you are able to speed up the aircraft above the supersonic region as in into the supersonic region okay the airflow will reattach itself but for that you would require a considerable amount of thrust so let's have a look at the properties of the shock wave the bow wave is initially not attached to the leading edge right remember the figure here it's quite a little bit separated but as the aircraft becomes faster and faster it moves faster and faster this leading edge and this bow wave will come closer and eventually the leading edge will attach itself to the bow wave okay as uh, the smaller the radius of the leading edge the bow wave attaches at a lower Mach number now properties of the normal shock wave first of all there is no change in the direction of the streamlines immediately behind the shock wave okay so behind the shock wave speed reduces as i told you but there is no change in direction and as i said it is slow to subsonic pressure temperature and density increase because there is piling up of air and compression the energy is reduced and a drag called wave drag is increased okay um, just to explain that wave drag contains basically two components one is the uh, drag due to the boundary layer separation and the second thing is with the drag formed by the conversion of kinetic energy into heat energy now properties of a shock oblique shock wave sorry uh, there is a direction change okay but the speed is still supersonic could be slightly reduced but it's still supersonic almost the same shock stall what is a shock stall okay normally what happens when there is an airflow separation there is a loss of lift and in this case the wing center of pressure moves aft what happens when the wing center of pressure moves aft there is a nose down pitching tendency right okay so uh, once the boundary layer separates and becomes turbulent the wick behind the wing okay causes the tail to buffet so that's when you encounter the high speed buffet here now the downwash decreases so the effective angle of attack of the tail increases so again what happens if the effective angle of attack of the tail increases again there is a nose down pitching moment so the effects from point number one and point number three it's a nose down pitching moment so this phenomenon is called mac tuck and basically what happens here is a reduced push force or the pull force is required to increase the speed like in the normal flight if you need to increase speed you need to push the sting right but in this case automatically the, there is a nose down pitching tendency so you need to use a lesser push force or basically you might even have to use a pull force to increase the speed okay so there is a system incorporated called the mac trim which basically trims the nose up to avoid this whole thing in a 1g maneuver this altitude at which basically this mac tuck or the high speed stall basically not the mac tuck basically the high speed stall when that happens it's called an aerodynamic ceiling and uh, when these shock waves are basically formed at the uh, control surface hinges okay there's something called a control buzz that may occur and it causes the control surfaces to flutter a lot and uh, yes there's one more thing that comes to my mind over here the 1.3 g altitude 1.3 g altitude is basically a design consideration as in if you are flying at a 1 g 
okay and uh, <clears throat> you are allowed to take a hit of positive 0.3 g without encountering a shock stall that's the basic idea or oh, this is the altitude at which you can fly in 1 g and not enter a shock stall even if you enter turbulence which changes with the force to 1.3 g that's the basic idea regarding it now let's let's have a look at the swept wing which is the main thing or the main uh, method of delaying the shock stall here i have drawn a picture this is the swept wing and the blue line is the direction of the airflow and here you can see the effective forward is increased right okay and uh, this red one is the perpendicular to the wing now since the effective chord is increased the thickness by chord ratio decreases and therefore the flow acceleration is reduced therefore reducing the Mach number right now um, the main idea behind this is that normally when we are considering the airflow or the speed of the airflow over a wing we take into consideration the perpendicular one so you can see that the perpendicular one is shorter than the one which is coming straight over here so basically we are fooling the wing to think that it is traveling at a slower speed than it actually is traveling at. so that's how you delay the shock stall using a swept wing and there's a couple of uh, disadvantages here is that the lift produced by a swept wing is less therefore higher takeoff and landing speeds are required and therefore higher runway lengths are also required and also a swept wing has a tendency for tip stall and therefore a nose up attitude on stall which could cause a super stall i'm not going to details about it and another device uh, used to delay shock stall is vortex generators a lot of devices similar to that are there and uh, basically what these devices do are that they delay the stall by re-energizing the boundary layer supercritical aerofoil yes what is it how does it look like i have got a small picture over here notice the particular s shaped camber over here yeah and you can also see it's got practically a flat surface so over here there's very less acceleration reducing the Mach number okay not actually reducing but not increasing that's the correct way to say it and the nose over here you can see it's blunt so it can afford a higher m crit before the stall shock stall or the shock wave occurs basically and also it has a larger thickness so a larger thickness means the strength increases the stiffness is increased and a lot lot more of storage space and uh, one more thing if you uh, notice the large thickness here and the blunt nose together uh, if you would be drawing a streamline it would be something like this notice the point right so slight option of bifurcating the airflow but if it's very thin would be like this would be closer just take a piece of paper and write you would understand it so those are the main things and uh, nothing else comes to my mind so yes thank you for watching click like below if you like the video put down any comments any questions i'll try to answer them as best as possible Thanks for watching and goodbye.